Hello all and welcome to another video and welcome to Winchester. The weekend, the week has finally arrived when I am going to embark on my first ever through hike which is the South Downs Way. Very excited, aiming to get up around about half past five, pack up, get some breakfast in Winchester and then head down to the City Mill which is the start, the official start of the South Downs Way. So I'm probably just going to take it easy, kick back, rest and just kind of get myself into a good space to start the trail tomorrow. Well good morning everyone, welcome to the rainy start of the South Downs Way. I do pick them don't I? In true Londoner outdoors style, the weather is terrible. Um, but the way I'm viewing it is that I'd rather have this right at the beginning where I'm feeling my optimum sort of energy wise and morale wise. So I'm hoping I can just sort of push on through it. Um, this rain is due to kind of carry on until about lunchtime today. In the forecast it was described as light rain, but I would not describe this as light rain. So I've got the full waterproofs on and we're just gonna go for it. Uh, I, I tried to find the start and I found the official start um, but it's just behind some railings because I'm here so early in the morning so I can't actually get in there. So here we go, 100 miles, first through hike, let's go. weather is officially very very grim but we're gonna push on it's muddy it's rainy it's wet but it's okay because I'm officially on the trail I've just done the uh, the obligatory shot over the M3 motorway uh, it's almost like the official kind of start it starts in Winchester city centre but you feel like once you've got over the motorway you're properly out of the city and take a look at this I feel like I'm actually heading into the countryside now which is good news for this East Londoner my first official marker it is 98 miles to Eastbourne so two miles done 98 miles to go Welcome back, uh, we are about six miles in, so I'm about halfway to Exton, which is my sort of main kind of first goal. Um, it's, been a, uh, it's been a bit of a tricky start to be fair. Um, the tracks have been so muddy. I mean, really, really muddy. It's the, the worst kind of slimy, claggy mud on top of chalk. So really glad. <laughs> I've got the trekking poles, I just don't know how I would have managed without the trekking poles, they really got me out of a sticky situation, literally. Uh, so, coming up to uh, a farm called Holden Farm, and if my memory, my research serves me correctly, they might have some facilities there to use. I don't know if you can see that, but that sign says cafe. Chocolate fudge brownie and warm black coffee. It really doesn't get much better than that. Right, so we're about to head off. I want to give a big shout out to these guys. This is Cafe at Holden Farm. It's a new cafe here at the farm. Today is their first day of opening and I'm their first customer. 
Thanks very much, everyone. The um, the chocolate the chocolate brownie was amazing. I feel like a new person. So you don't have to camp here. You can just come by for a chocolate brownie. Absolutely. Brilliant. Best chocolate brownies. <laughs> All right. Take care. Maybe Thanks a lot. Like. See you soon. Bye. Bye. So I was I was walking up this track just here, and I saw this group of intrepid hikers <laughs> with um, what, what, do you, what is the official name for it? A skull. A, a skull. Yeah. A rowing skull. Yeah, skull. And I thought I thought that they were just taking a break by it, <laughs> but it actually belongs to them. And then I thought, where's the nearest waterway? And and there there isn't. So. Do you mind just explaining the situation, the mystery <laughs> of the skull in the middle of the South Downs? Thanks. We are, we're actually on a practice hike this weekend. So we're walking, we started in Winchester, early doors this morning, picked up the skull um, and we're carrying it. We're doing about 30 kilometers today, but that's in practice for next weekend when we are carrying it the entire length of the South Downs Way. So we'll be walking from Winchester and finishing in Eastbourne, 100 miles. That's um, incredible. <laughs> yeah, and there's, and there's a bigger project. Is there, a, what's the big? There is a bigger project, <laughs> yes. It's all gearing up to, um, the four of us are part of a, a team, There She Rose, and we're rowing across the Atlantic at the end of the year. So it's all gearing up to that. The reason right. that we're carrying the boat is to symbolize all of the barriers to sport and exercise that girls face particularly around the age of kind of puberty so be that physical um you know there are no football clubs rugby clubs for girls no changing rooms or it might be um you know kind of confidence issues or whatever so that's the whole premise of our campaign is the whole reason that we the four of us have come together to row across the Atlantic Ocean is to inspire more girls and women to get into sport um all four of us are athletes in some capacity well, that, <laughs> that's amazing and really inspiring and yeah wishing you all the best thank you so much the South Downs and the end of the year yeah thank well. you you too thank you So I'm on mile 10 at the moment and uh, I just had an interesting chat with a hiker coming from the opposite direction to me and I explained to him how it had been a really, really wet and muddy morning and he said to me, expect the same if not worse to come. He said there's a river up ahead that's um, kind of going over the trail and it's pretty bad. It's time for a late lunch. My lunch is some, got some vacuum packed wraps, some bread wraps and some squeezy cheese. Right, we are at about mile 15 now. The feet have had a bit of a, a second life. <laughs> about an hour ago, they were really killing me. It was hard. It was quite hard for some reason, but they've sort of come back to life and have got me up to um, Old Winchester Hill. So I'm gonna push on, but I am quite looking forward to stopping and putting the tent up. Hello folks, it's seven o'clock and I'm knackered. 
the reason I'm knackered is that I've had to really look uh, for a place to camp. The open access land that I spotted on the OS map wasn't accessible in any way. <laughs> Um, and there was nothing. I kept walking and walking and there was nothing. So I was kind of getting a bit panicky about where I was going to camp. Um, but as luck would have it, I passed um, a hill that had um, a stile and it's, um, it's got a public right of way so people, people can kind of pass through it. So there we go. Uh, so the South Downs Way is over there. I know it looks like a river. Um, I'm going to have to worry about that in the morning. It's a submerged South Downs way. <laughs> it actually looks like a canal. Ridiculous. Anyway, we'll, we'll worry about that in the morning. But at least I've got the tent up. Such a relief. Such a relief. And I've only got about half an hour until sunset. So I'm hoping uh, no farmer comes up over the hill and asks me what I'm doing here. Um, but this is just great. It's flattish. Uh, it's not muddy. Um, yeah, I'm hoping this is going to just work. Not bad, eh? So tonight's dinner is something to eat. Vegetable chipotle chilli with rice. Very hungry indeed. Okay, so the meal is hydrating, rehydrating, in my homemade warm, cosy pouch made out of some... Um, silver kind of bubble wrap parcel stuff and, uh, and I'm just kind of letting it nestle in my down jacket um, just to maximize the, uh, the warmth, retain the heat. That path was a little bit interesting. The mud continues. Morning all. Um, it's about 7.45. Um, I set the alarm for half five, but I wanted a bit of a lie-in. And yeah, I've just had a uh, cheer charge, kind of flapjack bar. There's a bit of breakfast. I haven't made a hot drink. Just wanted to get packed away um, just because of where I was. and didn't really want to be hanging around to be honest with you um yeah so it's day two day two of the south downs way so the plan for today is i'm going to walk for one to two miles to a place called the sustainability center which has a cafe that opens at half past eight um, so i'm heading straight for there gonna fill up my bottles get a coffee hopefully get some extra breakfast and then i'm going to push on to queen elizabeth park and I'm aiming to get a similar mileage today as I did yesterday. Right, so I found a cafe. It opens in eight minutes. So it's now about 9.30, a little bit later than I, than I wished, but you know, an opportunity to uh, get lots of drinking water and um, eat well, use the toilets, brush my teeth, <laughs> kind of all of those things that just sort of make you feel human. And I'm heading in the direction of Queen Elizabeth Country Park. And then beyond that, yeah, it's going to be kind of cocking, it's kind of the next main town. One thing I should mention is that the temperatures are due to really fall tonight. So the weather apps are saying um, minus one, which is a bit bizarre for April. 
and schoolboy error on my part I don't have the right sleeping bag because I was in weight saving kind of mentality for this trip thinking April it'd be fine um, and I was a bit chilly last night so I had to put my down jacket inside my sleeping bag kind of around my legs um, so uh, we'll see I've put out a bit of an SOS to some people I know in the area to see if anyone's got a sleeping bag liner they can drop off maybe a few star jumps before bed might help Well, today's adventure's taken a little bit of a turn. <laughs> Nothing to worry about, but um, I've made the decision just to come off the trail temporarily to go to a camping shop. Now, you, you know I mentioned earlier that um, I was a bit cold last night and the sleeping bag that I packed isn't as adequate as I thought it would be for the conditions. Um, it's due to go down to below zero tonight and it's just gonna play on my mind if I don't have something extra. So whilst I've got the chance, because I wrote really after this, um, I'm gonna head four miles to a town called Petersfield, which has a branch of Mountain Warehouse. Um, they might have something, so even if, even if I can get a, a thin sleeping bag that I can double up, put over mine, um, that'll just give me a bit of peace of mind. To learn to adapt to these things, um, is yeah, it's a four mile walk, might get a taxi back if I can, and I'll rethink where I'm going to stay tonight. I'm not gonna get as many miles in today, but it's fine, it's all right. So I've got my thermal sleeping bag liner and I'm waiting for my Uber, which took a while to book, but I do have an Uber that's going to take me, thank goodness, back to the trail so I don't have to walk all the way back. Um, then I think I'll have some lunch and just reassess um, the schedule. <laughs> What a day. So yeah, I'm gonna try and make some miles up. I'm not gonna to get to where I plan to get to, but um, I've had a look at the OS map in the cafe, spotted some potentials. Uh, I'm gonna to head towards the outskirts of Cocking. Well, the outskirts of the outskirts of Cocking. I'm gonna try and get sort of three or four hours in because I really, really need to try and make some distance. Hello all, it is 5 p.m. ish on day two and we are at mile 30. I'm pretty chuffed with that. Uh, bearing in mind the start of the day and I had to take a detour. Um, so yeah, mile 30. So I'm on Harting Hill, uh, which is on the Harting Downs area. Um, as you can see, the sun's come out and it is glorious. It has just changed the whole experience. It's the complete opposite of yesterday. So yesterday was um, uh, an utter slog, day one. Mud and rain and dreariness and more mud this morning. But now the sun's come out, it's really, it's really, really had an impact uh, on the whole experience. Um, and also the paths are much more passable so there, there, is, there, are, there is still mud around um, don't get me wrong but a lot of it is drying out and there are ways around it whereas yesterday it there just was there was just no way around it you literally had to sort of um get a scythe and go through bushes or um wade through it it was a bit crazy and it got very very muddy in the process 
I'm going to do about another hour and a half to two hours up to about seven o'clock so I'm going to get about another six miles in and that will get me near to cocking not actually at cocking but near to cocking um, and then I'm going to find somewhere to wild camp Welcome back all. Um, it's around seven o'clock and I'm done for the day. <laughs> Truly done. I found somewhere to wild camp in a minute. I'm in a nook of a farmer's field um, and the farm buildings aren't too far away, but I don't have many other options. So it's, it's typical sort of walking around today. I've seen so many places that would be suitable for wild camping, but I don't need to wild camp. But when I do need to wild camp, finding the spots it feels really tricky at the moment i'm gonna basically wait till it's almost dark get the tent up and then i'm gonna get out of here really early because um i actually want to make some miles up tomorrow that's the end of day two um it's, it's been a good day overall it has it had an unexpected uh, uh twist <laughs> this morning didn't it um but the sun came out and just everything got better and i felt more settled today i just felt like I just could just enjoy it and I was just really glad that I'd come down to this trail. Um, so almost time to crash, um, but I do have to eat, it's important. So I have something to eat, pasta bolognese, gonna get that on, got another flapjack, got millions of flapjacks <laughs> this week and, um, and then I'm gonna hit the sack. So thanks very much and I shall see you in the morning, night night. Welcome to day three of the South Downs Way. Can't believe it's three days. It's cold. <laughs> That's the first observation. Um, very cold. Got down to about zero, maybe one degree last night. And of course, because I'm high up a lot of the time, you notice it a lot more. The good news is, is that that thermal sleeping bag liner that I got yesterday really made a difference. I'm so glad. I went off the trail and I got it. Sometimes you just have to make these little sacrifices just to make the adventure a little bit more enjoyable. And it's still giving me peace of mind now for the next few nights. Otherwise it just would have bugged me, I think. Plus it would have got a bit cold. Uh, yeah, so really glad to get walking this morning, get the blood flowing. Just sort of packing up around camp. My feet were just going numb. So it's great just to kind of get walking now. I've just walked up a bit of elevation and uh, the blood's flowing and I'm starting to warm up a little bit which is most appreciated. Uh, so the plan for today is I'm going to head to Amberley where there is a 
proper campsite that I'm booked into. They've got showers, hot showers hopefully, and a few amenities. That coffee was just amazing. It was just such a, I'm just checking and going the right way. Coffee I had was such a morale booster. <laughs> Sounds silly, doesn't it? You know, we make coffee every day at home, but when you're out alone, when you're, you're doing something like this, just a, a simple cup of coffee can warm you up, lift the spirits. So that was good. It's about 10.30 now and I've managed to fill up my water bottles from a different place actually. So um, not the place I mentioned earlier, Hill Barn, because just before that uh, there is a cafe called Cadence Cafe and they're at Cocking Hill Dairy or Cocking Hill Farm. Uh, so that was great. Nice coffee, uh, quick snack, filled up the bottles. Um, and the Cadence cafes, I've learned, uh, there's quite a few of them that are, are kind of dotted along the South Downs way. So it looks like they've been set up, I might be wrong, but it looks like they've been set up for, for hikers and people that are cycling and, and doing the trail because they're kind of conveniently placed. So that's really, really good. It's weird weather. It's generally chilly, but it kind of gets warm and then it gets cold and then I get warm and then it gets cold. So the fleece has been on, off, on, off. Gloves have been on, off. Um, taking a break at the 40 mile mark. How about that? Really chuffed with that, 40 miles. It's like I've taken a sizable chunk out of this uh, South Downs way. Um, so about to get going again. Um, I've got about eight miles until I get to Foxley Barn, I believe that's the name of the campsite, where they have showers and I need a shower. So it's pastrami and kind of gherkins and Swiss cheese toasty. And this looks incredible. <laughs> I tell you, after living off snacks and camping food for three days, this is kind of heaven really. Final push for day three. Okay, quick update. I'm at Big Nor Hill, which what is about 44 miles in, and I can see the sea. I, <laughs> let's see if I can just zoom in a bit. It's right over there because the day is so clear you can see it really clearly on the horizon and I can even you won't be able to see it but I can I can see a ship kind of in the center of the picture on the horizon that is 
amazing. Yeah, I genuinely wasn't expecting to see the coast so soon. I thought it would be like another 25 miles or something, but I think it's just purely because of the weather. It's just, it's just a blue sky. There's not a cloud in the sky. So I feel very blessed to be able to get these views today. Absolutely stunning. It's about 10 past four now, Monday afternoon. I'm feeling it, really ready to stop. I'm really feeling it. Um, it's not a massive distance that's been covered. It'll be about 16, 17 miles when I get there, but uh, it's the terrain. I mean, the bad news about going down a hill is that you normally have to go up another one straight after, and it seems to be the nature of the, of the downs. It's just sort of down and up and down and up. Um, the trade-off is that the scenery is spectacular. I mean, it is out of this world. It's just really lovely. Um, but yeah, my back is aching and my legs are starting to ache a bit now. So I am looking forward to stopping. I think I'm round about mile 46 now. I think my accommodation is nearer than I thought. <laughs> proper campsite. I feel like I've hit the jackpot. Um, Lynn and Pete, the owners, are absolutely lovely. They give me a tour. I'm the only one here at the moment. I'll, I'll show you the field that I'm in. It's uh, <laughs> pretty empty. Um, there's some guys on the way that I met in the hills over there. They've just gone to the shops, but it's lovely. There's a kitchen and there's showers that look like you'd be in a hotel, to be honest with you. Um, and I'm going to just pitch up here, I'm going to get the tent up and um, just give it a bit of an airing because when I had to leave that farmer's field this morning, early, there was a bit of condensation on my tent and I didn't get a chance to dry it out. So I'm going to give it a bit of an airing whilst the sun's quite strong and, um, and then I'm going to order, I'm going to order a curry. The other thing to mention is that um, Lynn and Pete tell me that this is the exact halfway point. So apparently, according to them, um, I guess they should know, they have hikers coming through all the time. Um, this is the 50 mile point. Just checking out the state of my hair. It's been under various hats and beanies over the last three days. I have to say, I think I've earned this uh, meal for my 50 miles on the South Downs Way. Right, so it's about quarter to 10 and I'm in the little kind of kitchenette hut place on the campsite and there's some other campers outside around a sort of a little fire thing, but um, I'm happy in here just to get out of the cold. Um, spent the last three days outdoors, so it's nice to be in here. I'm just actually having a look um, at the map, having a look at where I'm potentially gonna go tomorrow, where I've been today. Um, I mean, today has been um, quite a tricky day. It's been um, amazing in the sense that the weather's been good again. The views have been incredible. Got to see the sea in the distance for the first time, which was quite exciting. Um, but it has been a, a, taken its toll on my legs and my feet a little bit. And the paths have been the paths have been a bit unrelentless. You go down a hill, you go up a hill, you go down a hill, you zigzag. So, uh, like the end, the, the last bit today was only meant to be five miles, but it felt a lot longer because it was kind of zigzagging up and and down and and the paths was, were just so rocky and stony so you're just constantly trying to stabilize with your feet and your legs and just using loads of muscles and really really feeling it on the feet and in the legs the tent's pitched got to pitch it early um to dry it out and i've done 50 miles 
which I, I didn't realize I'd done, so I'm halfway through. Cheers, everyone. I'm gonna have my 50 mile beer, celebratory beer, and I'm gonna hit the sack. See you in the morning. Morning all, it's about quarter to seven, and it was a cold one last night. Um, yeah, first night when there's been a thick frost around and on my tent, so I had the cold to contend with. Um, and also uh, the sheep would not shut up. I thought sheep were meant to just go to sleep at night. And um, there was a field behind me full of sheep and lambs. I think by about 3 a.m. they decided to go to bed. But I, I think, what, what have they got to keep going on about? Anyway, um, I'm gonna have a brew here. Um, I'm gonna grab one of my flapjack bars and slowly get ready to leave. Wash and laundry here last night, so I need to go and get that, check it's not frozen and hit the trail. And we're off. Welcome to day four of the South Downs Way. The sun is shining and it's forecast to be like this for pretty much the most of the day. I met a great group of guys, about six of them, uh, also doing the South Downs Way. So if you're watching this at the moment, Dan, Jamie, can't remember the rest of the names, then, uh, Good to meet you, hope you made it to the end. Next stop is Washington, which is just over six miles away. And then I've got a package to pick up in, oh, Trudy Hill, the Youth Hostel Association at Trudy Hill. I sent myself a package. It's whether they're gonna be open by the time I get there. And the other thing is whether I try and get a room there or wild camp tonight. I quite like to wild camp and get a few more miles in, but I just need to get a spot that's lower down because again, it's gonna be cold tonight and uh, I don't really wanna to be too exposed because the area I'm heading to is getting quite high. So, uh, and I'm noticing the draft coming into the Helm Compact One, coming under the, uh, the bottom of the fly sheet. So, uh, if I can drop 100 metres or so, rather than 240 metres, that would be pretty good. So I am about three to four miles in to day four. I've just come off the phone from the YHA and I'll book myself a hostel for tonight. Two reasons for that. It's um, really cold. It's gonna be another cold one tonight. Um, and I am at quite high elevation uh, on the South Downs. So I can't really get down to a, a more sort of protected area from the cold. Uh, and the second reason is that that parcel of goodies that I told you about has been sent to this very hostel. So it seems a bit odd if I collect the goodies but don't actually stay there. So hopefully the package has arrived. Um, it means I can sort of take it a bit more easy. I'll make up the miles tomorrow. Um, one thing I'm sort of learning from all of this is just to sort of be adaptive and just to, you know, be prepared to sort of change the schedule as you go a little bit. You know, it's just the way it is. I'm not here to break the land speed record. Uh, <laughs> but my aim is to finish the whole thing uh, to get to Eastbourne. So um, and that is what I intend to do. So 
So just crossed the A24 and heading into picturesque Washington. It looks so nice here and it's just uh, made even better by the amazing weather at the moment. So I've done about six miles. So I think I'm gonna take a break. Uh, one of my feet is a bit sore, so I, I want to do a blisters check. And I think I'm gonna make a wrap for lunch. Absolutely lovely fish and chips at that pub. Oh, much needed. Um, what I didn't do in the pub was check my feet because it wasn't really the place to do that. So um, I've since done that. Um, and I have spotted a small blister on, my, on a little toe of my right foot and on my big toe of my right foot, I've got a warm spot. Um, so I've got the compede plasters out and um, cleaned up the feet, put those on, and I've just kind of loosened up my trail runners. I've got eight miles now, uh, eight miles, and I'm gonna plow on to Truly Hill. Okay, we are at about mile 57 now, and I'm at Chanctonbury Ring, which is um, an ancient hill fort just up there with incredible views in that direction. And then over there in the distance, of course, you can see the sea on the horizon. Um, this is an interesting place, if you don't know about Chanctonbury Ring. Um, it's uh, quite well known for strange goings on, uh, paranormal activity, uh, unexplained events. So if you Google Chanctonbury Ring, I'll put the spelling up on the screen, um, you will find some very interesting information about this place. Now, not so long ago, I came here without knowing any of that and I camped right on the edge of Chanctonbury Ring. And I didn't experience anything actually. I found it personally quite a peaceful place. It is eerily quiet in there though. I didn't hear any birds singing at all. So when you go into the middle of the, of the mound over there, um, it's very, very quiet. But it's interesting. Uh, I, as I say, I found out after I'd been there and I felt quite spooked by what I read. Yes, we are definitely getting nearer to the sea, everyone. The miles just seem to be going very slowly today and also uh, I've got a stomach ache so uh, that's not really helping. I don't know what it is, um, whether it's kind of like stomach cramp or something, but it's uh, kind of slowing me down a bit as well. Uh, I think I'm about four, maybe five miles away from Trudy Hill now. And uh, I'm really glad that I've gone for a private room there as opposed to like a dormitory. So I can just have some space to myself and just kind of crash sort myself out, uh, just refocus a bit. Okay, we're nearly back to where we should have been. Uh, oh, some positive news though, um, we've passed 60 miles, so I have done 60 miles of the South Downs Way and two miles to go, or two and a bit miles to go until I get to the hostel, private room, a bed to sleep in, 
make me some food at their cafe. Okay, come on, let's do it. I found the South Downs way again. That's a good feeling. We're going that way. I think I can see the youth hostel through the trees, which is a good sign. Absolutely whacked. I can barely, <coughs> I can barely move. <laughs> oh. So I'm settled in to my uh, abode. Um, it's very nice just to have heat, to have a bed, a bunk bed. Um, it's only me in here, private room, so that's really good. I don't need to share it with anyone. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I've just, at the moment, I've got like everything, as you can see, kind of laid out, um, just so that I can kind of sort my gear out, sort stuff out, I've got stuff drying on the radiator, um, even got the tent hanging up in the corner over there, um, just because this morning, just before I packed it away, I managed to dry the outside of it in the sun, but there was condensation on the inside because it was so cold last night. So this is a good opportunity just to get everything dry and sorted, I'll repack um, for tomorrow. Um, I was just chatting to the actually the group of guys that I met at the last campsite and um, we keep bumping into each other and they've turned up here at the hostel so and I said to them uh, did the did the 14 15 miles that you did today feel pretty brutal and a lot longer because it did for me and they and they said totally and they're about 20 years younger than me at least um, so yeah I think what one thing I'm noticing is that the um, the terrain in the last couple of days has been a lot harder than it was at the beginning uh, and also I think it's that accumulation of miles on my body and it's really testing me now it's really testing me physically every part of me aches like my shoulders my feet my legs nothing really prepares you for the terrain here yeah it's been hard work hard work but I'm keeping on going and I'm kind of you know just listening to my body and taking breaks and not trying to put pressure on myself. I forgot to mention the parcel turned up that I sent myself. There we go. How about that? Dairy milk whole nut, large size, couple of hot chocolate sachets, Whisper One and a Galaxy One, double Snickers bar, randoms, chicken noodles and a pasta and sauce. I don't have a plan for tomorrow by the way so I don't know what time I'm leaving and I haven't really worked out where I'm heading but I'm sure it'll work out. Night night. Good morning and welcome to day five of the South Downs Way. Cracking night last night, absolutely the best decision I've ever made. Staying over in the hostel, warm room, dried the tent off, sorted all my kit out, just got sorted and also had, as you saw, a stunning breakfast um, that set me up for the day. Uh, so I've got three days, or I've planned three days um, to walk the remainder of the trail. 
um, and I've decided just to sort of be a bit kind to myself because I am a, I am getting a bit achy and a bit creaky. So um, I've slightly reduced the mileage and I'm going to spread it over three days instead of two days. So aim of today is to get down to um, a, an area that I've spotted to wild camp near Kingston, Kingston near Lewis, I think it's called. So I'm heading down there. That's about 15 miles away. Uh, the first point that I'm heading to is Devil's Dyke, which is about four miles from here. So just going to break it down, um, same kind of strategy as I've been doing all week, kind of bit by bit, um, stop for breaks, keep hydrated, um, had some diarylite salts last night just to kind of keep topped up and that's about it. So I've just arrived at Devil's Dyke, which is this incredible kind of chunk out of the land, sort of valley. Uh, there are legends as to how it came into being, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really quite something. Um, just down here, it's incredibly steep. So just making sure that my rucksack doesn't roll down there because that would not be helpful. Okay, we're just coming up to five miles. Five miles done for today. So what's that? It's about mile, I think it's about mile 68, which is pretty good. We're getting very near to 70, which is even better. Now, just back up on the hill there, I noticed in the distance, there's a main road just down here. And it looks like there's a petrol garage, possibly a BP petrol garage. So that's a bit exciting. I think I'm going to jump in there and uh, maybe see if I can pick up some grab and go lunch and kind of start chomping down on that. I save a bit of time. So let's see what they got. Well, that was rather nice. That little cheeky takeaway lunch. Very convenient. So we're back on the trail now. Um, kind of leaving the Pycombe area and heading on up to Ditchling Beacon.
I have finally reached Ditchling Beacon. So that's about nine miles from where I started earlier. Um, a well needed rest. So um, I've had a few snacks that I got at the petrol station earlier and um, just sorted my feet out, gave them an airing, just uh, just have take, taken some time really. Um, really, really needed it. Um, not really sunny today at all. It's been pretty overcast as you can see. Um, but a bit warmer than yesterday. Well, I say a bit warmer, not as cold as yesterday. <laughs> I think it's about 11, about 10 or 11 degrees um, down at ground level, but obviously I'm, I'm quite high up here. So I think Ditchling Beacon's one of the highest points on the South Downs. I'll put the height actually up on the screen. Um, so yeah, it does feel a bit colder and I've had to put my, put my raincoat on over my fleece to kind of just uh, block out a bit of the, the cold wind. So it's around 2, 2.30 now. Got about five more miles to do until I get to this area on the map that I've spotted. Don't know what it's gonna be like. So it might be a bit of a gamble. Um, and the other thing is that there's rain due. Yeah, I know. Haven't had rain for four days. So that'll be interesting. And the rain is due around seven o'clock, just about the time when I'd be putting the tent up. All right, onwards. I said it before and I say it again, when you don't need to wild camp, you see the most amazing places, but when you do need to wild camp, they're a bugger to find. So, um, yeah, so I've, I've come off the trail. I'm about 13, 14 miles in on today's walk. Um, and I'm on what looks like, it, well, on first appearances, it could be okay, but it's, um, and I'll just show you, it's, it is private land. There's a public footpath that runs through it. It's not strictly open access land. Uh, it's a bit exposed. Can't find anywhere suitable to tuck myself away. It's a bit hilly. And also there's uh, the ground. There's just there's loads of rocks and stinging nettles and stuff. So um, not feeling it really. However, the good news is that about three miles, no, maybe two miles over in that direction, there is a campsite that I've given a ring and they have got pitches and they said I could turn up whenever I want and pay in the morning. So I'm probably just gonna do that. <laughs> um, do that for tonight. It's um, almost time to go to bed. Um, I've had my chicken tikka with rice. I think that's what it was meant to be. It wasn't too bad. And um, yeah, just ready to hit the hay. We're on approximately 77 miles. Um, so we'll be hitting 80 in the morning. And then I want to, um, yeah, I'd like to get at least 15 done tomorrow that would be quite good um, then wild camp tomorrow night fingers crossed and Friday we'll finish it feels a bit strange I don't know where the time's gone I can't believe I am where I am and and I'm within touching distance of the end um, it's a very strange feeling I don't know how how it's quite going to affect me when I hit that hundred mile end point. Anyway, time to sleep, time to rest the legs, time to rest the feet. Good night.
Welcome to day six of the South Downs Way. My legs are feeling good, well rested. My feet are feeling pretty reasonable actually. I'm gonna try and get about 14 miles in today and that'll get me to the other side of Alfriston. Uh, last night, I slept reasonably well. Again, this campsite was on a little bit of a slope, a bit like the other one, and uh, it rained quite heavily overnight. So I've tried to get as much water off the tent as I could this morning. It's all packed up in a, in a dry bag, and then I'll just have to deal with it later. Having said that, we've got more rain due tonight and this afternoon. <laughs> Lots to look forward to. Okay, so we're about three miles in this morning and it has been delightful savour the flat trails whilst you can is what I'm telling myself. I think it's the first day this week where when I've left my, uh, my, my place of camp I've actually had a flat start to the day so it just means I can enjoy it, I, there's, there's no particular effort, I can just power on. So I think we've done about 80 miles, 80 miles, it just doesn't seem real, it doesn't seem real that I've walked 80 miles. from the Western Hemisphere into the Eastern Hemisphere on the South Downs Way. Good afternoon all, um, time check, it is 12ish and I'm in South East, uh, the beautiful South East Church. Um, as you can see, they've got a uh, South Downs Way water supply, um, so that's good, I'm gonna top up the bottles in a minute. And it's a great opportunity also for me to dry out my gear. So um, the tent, um, Hope the church don't mind is draped over the church wall in the sunshine drying nicely so they really want to take advantage of the sunny weather that i've got before the rain comes later um, so that i can actually sort of get into a fairly dryish tent so uh, and i've got a few other bits um, on the bench here drying as well so i've done about six miles um, that have been good a good six miles um, flat bit of downhill but no sort of major challenges which has been nice really nice for a Thursday morning on the South Downs Way of course the other thing that I've been doing as well as hiking the South Downs Way is filming the South Downs Way so that you can watch it now uh, on YouTube so uh, those of you that um, that are YouTubers will know what I'm, I'm talking about but there is a, quite a lot of toing and froing and walking past cameras and going back to get cameras um, the nature of the beast, I guess. Um, but I reckon it's added a few miles. <laughs> so I think by the time I finish this, I probably would have done well over 100. Um, so yeah, I, I've, I've actually um, racked up quite a lot of footage. My tent is about to blow over the wall, so I'm gonna go and get it.
well that weather was a little bit interesting had a bit of an impromptu hail shower um, that came sweeping in over the hills I'm, <laughs> I'm glad it didn't last too long and it passed um, but anyway I'm starting to dry out now which is good news I'm within touching distance of Alfriston and it is mile 90 yes 90 miles 10 miles until the end so that feels pretty good so I'm gonna head down to Alfriston uh, and then not far from there is another hiker called James who I've met a few times here on the trail and uh, he's given me a ring and we're gonna hook up and try and do a wild camp together tonight because it's um, the last night on the trail for both of us before the final push over the Seven Sisters tomorrow. So I've just arrived in Alfriston and it's really strange sort of being back in a town where there are houses and, and people live um, after spending many many days and miles in the hills I am seriously done in now it's seven and a half hours of walking Oh, my legs are aching, my feet are aching. Um, on the other side of Alfriston, uh, going, heading in the direction of Littleton, and then uh, Hiker James is in Littleton. So, um, find him in a minute and drag ourselves <laughs> through the mud, because it's a bit muddy, to the wild camping spot. Hey. Hello. Nice to see you here. <laughs> How's it going? Sweet sister. All right. So I didn't bring on this because it was too heavy. How are you getting on with that? Okay, welcome back everyone. It's about seven o'clock and you can see I am there he is, joined by James, who, I think it was, was it the 20 mile point we met? Yeah. So we met at 20 that. miles, then I think we met at 70 miles. Um, and it's, what's interesting about the trail is that you do bump into people doing the same thing and you don't see them for ages and then you, then you do, you bump into them, which is quite nice. Um, and what's good about today is it's for both of us, it's our final day on the South Downs Way. So it's quite significant. Um, both aiming to... The day before our final day. Oh, it is the day before, isn't it? The penultimate day. Uh, and then, yeah, so tomorrow, it's the big climb up the Seven Sisters. And then um, the finishing line. So we're heading off to a potential spot um, that's been recommended. And uh, there are other spots around here actually and in fact it's got a lot more potential than other parts of the trail about 15 back a day how much is your weight i reckon with 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 a liter and a half of water i reckon i'm hitting it okay so we're both all set up in our tents now and we found some nice little woodland we had a bit of a bit of a walk around just to find uh, a suitable spot, a flat spot, and uh, we are settled into our camp in the woods and it's um, dinner time and we are, both of us, using up things that we've not had this week. So I have got uh, a packet of crushed chicken noodles that have been, yeah, a little bit crushed in my rucksack. Um, I might try that. Never tried these before. Uh, batches, pasta and sauce. And then I've got loads of sachets we were just talking james and i about the amount of sachets of hot chocolate and coffee we've not used so um so really it's just the case of just uh sort of finishing things off lightening the packs a little bit for tomorrow
right, so it's about 10.30 and uh, we're in our respective tents, both eaten, both sorted ourselves out and uh, getting some well-earned sleep before the final leg of the South Downs Way tomorrow, which um, according to James, he's just done a bit of a check, it's eight and a half miles. So um, in theory, a shorter day in theory but we'll see what the seven sisters brings tomorrow night night Well, good morning all. Welcome to day seven of the South Downs Way. Well, the final day, the final day. I've got kind of weird sort of mixed feelings about it. I'm sort of um, excited about reaching the end and the sense of achievement, but I'm also um, I'm feeling a bit slightly sad, I suppose, because it's, uh, it's the end of what's been an amazing experience and, um, a lot of memories have been created. But anyway, eight and a half miles to go. In theory, a straightforward day, but it is the Seven Sisters. And those of you that don't know the Seven Sisters, um, it's quite incredible scenery-wise, um, but it's also very undulating. It's a series of very, very large hills um, over the limestone cliffs. But I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be brilliant. So I'm just arriving at Cookmere Haven, which I've been to before actually. And look at that, what a sight. And the weather is glorious. It was always forecast to be pretty sunny today and it hasn't disappointed. Clear blue skies and that morning sunshine is just really bringing out so much color in the landscape today. And if it stays like that, we are going to be in for some brilliant views up on those cliffs. So we are good to go for the Seven Sisters. Before I do it, I want to give a bit of a shout out to the Salt Marsh Cafe down here at the Seven Sisters Visitor Center. Basically their mains water has been cut off and they felt really bad for me because I couldn't refill my water bottles and it was my last opportunity. Um, I had about 600 milliliters on me. Um, but just as I walked out, the, the cafe manager, she just called after me and gave me a can of South Downs mineral water. Just little gestures like that. It's just, it's just things like that that have just made this, this kind of journey really special. I've met some very kind people. Um, and I have heard other people talk about this, you know, when you're, when you're on the trail, you do experience these kind of sort of acts of kindness and, and generosity. And yeah, it, it just, just really struck me.
first awe-inspiring <laughs> view of the day. This is what it's all about, folks. It really is. And I understand now why people do the South Downs starting at Winchester because you, you end with views like this. Absolutely beyond words, breathtaking, just, and it's just brought to life by just the, the spring weather that we're having at the moment, uh, just the, and the great sunshine that there is today. It's absolutely incredible. into the final two miles now. So I guess this is around about mile 98, 97, 98. Just a couple of reflections as I finish off my first through hike. It's been, it has been absolutely amazing. Um, I, I have to admit when I, when I came down on the train from London at the beginning of this, I was a bit nervous about whether I was able to complete this. What I have learned from this is that uh, your body can do more than you think it can and sometimes um, we just have to just 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 kick ourselves up the butt and actually just move and get on and do things and and that, that's what I've done and it ha I'm not gonna lie I mean it has been challenging it's been physically challenging it's been mentally challenging there's been a couple of moments where I've thought why on earth am I doing this but for the majority of it it's been it's been incredible and there's, there's such such great memories uh, created. I just want to give a, a couple of shout outs. Um, one is to uh, Barry from Polar London and Russ from The Trail Hunter. And th th they will say, oh, it's nothing. But honestly, you two have just been You two have been so, so supportive of me and just um, I've learned loads from you guys as people that are experienced of doing this kind of thing and uh, you know I can't thank you enough you know just the support before I've done it whilst I've been doing it it's almost been like a sort of private support team in the <laughs> in the background um, via Instagram um, but yeah Barry from Polar London Russ from the Trail Hunter yeah you're great guys and thank you thank you So I've just seen a, a bus go by on, on a nearby road that says Eastbourne Sightseeing on it. So I'm really hoping that that bus has just left Eastbourne and Eastbourne's not far away. That in the yonder is Eastbourne. I can't tell you. Oh, look at it. The end is coming. Right, 
right, so we're just descending into Eastbourne now. I think this is it. I think, I think we're coming to the end. Seven days, eight hours of walking a day. Finally, comes to a conclusion. The sun is shining, it's been amazing. Thank you everyone for watching and for supporting me on social media. It's, uh, it's really helped keep me going. Whoa, this is it, I can see the sign. I can see it. <laughs> oh, I can't tell you how amazing this feels. Mile 99 about to become mile 100. I need to try and make sure I don't fall down on the final, final few meters. We're gonna get the sign. Probably 20 meters to go. There it is. <laughs> wow. Oh, well. I'm at the end, everyone. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> what a journey. Finally at the end. Never thought it would happen. 